Today we're going to be taking a look at FDM printing versus resin. And I'm going to be focusing on printing miniatures because D&D and tabletop gaming is a huge gateway into 3D printing. When you're looking to get your first 3D printer, specifically for making tiny heroes or armies of space orcs, you have a lot of choices. Should you go for resin for that extreme detail or FDM because it's less messy and it has way more material options? Now, when I was a kid playing D&D, the only choice I had was begging my parents to stop at the comic book store that also carried dice and lead figures. Yes, lead figures. That's what we called them, because that's what they were made out of. It was a long time ago. Now, I don't have those little figures anymore, so I stopped by my local comic book store to see what's currently available and what you could get off the rack. It was actually pretty similar to the experience I had back in the day when I played D&D. I found a selection of really nice but pretty generic heroes that you can only customize with paint. These are made of plastic and they really did have some incredible detail. Now, the advantage of printing your own minis is that the choice is available to you as digital files. Some are free, some are not, and some you can specify to your own specs, just like setting up a video game. First, some basics. What's the difference between resin and FDM printing? I'm going to use this Mars 5 to represent resin printing and my Bamboo Lab A1 Mini for FDM. There's a lot of printers out there, but these are a good solid choice for beginners and the perfect size for printing tiny things. FDM stands for Fused Deposit Modeling, and it's what a lot of us think of when we imagine a 3D printer. You put a spool of filament on one end, it runs through the tool head, and gets heated up to about 200 degrees Celsius for your basic PLA. <laughs> and it squirts out your model layer by wafer-thin layer. This method is clean, there's no messy chemicals, and no smell from the PLA. You can run this printer anywhere you can find an electrical outlet. You also have tons of material choices and more colors than you could throw a stick at. The only problem with printing miniatures on an FDM printer is the lack of resolution. These tiny details are really hard to reproduce, even when you use a smaller nozzle. Now, there's people out there who have tuned an FDM printer to print a really good miniature, but sometimes it's going to come down to the model choice, uh, like this figure that kept breaking the, the wrist and the tails on these pets that had to be glued back on. So you might want to pick a designer that uses thicker figures or a little less detail or just print them a little bit bigger. Resin printers have no problem with those tiny details. They measure resolution by the micron, but they're also messy. Resin printers use liquid material and light to make your model. You pour resin into the printer's vat and the machine dips the build plate into that goo, squishing it tight to the glass plate under the vat. This leaves a super thin layer of resin sandwiched between the glass and the build surface. Even though this printer uses double or even quadruple the number of layers to make a model as a typical FDM printer, it can go a lot faster. See, the FDM machine has to draw each line like an artist, but a resin printer can flash the entire layer at once, more like a rubber stamp. Now, before you get all excited about that speed and detail, I have to tell you about the downside of resin printing. Resin, in its liquid form, is a toxic material that causes irritating fumes and rashes if it gets on your skin. You need to wear gloves to keep it off your hands and work in a well-ventilated area. We've installed a ceiling vent in my workroom to keep the fumes at bay, and I've got a little air purifier to clear up the rest. Some people choose to print in the garage to keep this whole mess out of their house. Once the model is printed, you have to wash the extra resin off with isopropyl alcohol or something similar, dry it, and then cure it with more UV light to harden up that outer layer. Sunlight will work in a pinch, but a dedicated wash and cure station is a much better option. And remember how I said this stuff is toxic while it's liquid? That means you cannot pour it down your drain, so you really need to invest in a crap ton of paper towels to help it clean up. Once you put in the finishing work, cured resin is totally safe to handle. How safe? Well, doctors and dentists use resin printers to make medical implants, splints, and even grandma's dentures. So, yes, cured resin is totally safe. It just involves a lot of chemistry, and it needs to be handled with proper respect. So if you're a parent watching this video and you're thinking about letting your young gamer get a new 3D printer, I would stick with FDM. Unless they're a teenager and they can understand the importance of lab safety protocols. There is another way to get great detailed models without the mess or even the need to buy a resin printer. And that's using a professional service like PCBWay. They were kind enough to sponsor today's video. It's really easy to send your digital files over to PCBWay. Just go to their website and download your files and they will send you a model in a couple of days. And here's the results. Look at these, they're gorgeous. And they cost about the same as my comic book store models, but they're so much cooler because I custom designed these models myself. Thanks PCBWay. 
So how did a non-artist like myself get to make custom D&D models? Simple, I went to Hero Forge and I made these using their custom software. Now this video is not sponsored by Hero Forge, I just happen to think it's a cool program. If you've ever played a game that lets you create a custom character, maybe like Skyrim, you'll be right at home here. Besides humans, it has all the fantasy species you would find in tabletop gaming. You can customize your figure right down to the eyebrows and then suit them up in clothing and armor to go with your adventuring style. Wizard Elf, easy. Zombie Cowboy, why not? 3D printing YouTuber with her loyal doggo, maybe. There's familiars, weapons and props, horses and bikes to ride, and a lot of things to sit on like rocks and treasure chests or steampunk mobility devices. Hero Forge is constantly adding to the collection. When you're done, you can buy your character as an STL file to print it yourself or send it off to PCB Way or give it to a friend with a printer. It's all yours. Hero Forge has great quality and it's fun to play with, but at $8 a file, it's not what I would recommend for building that orc army. We have better options for that. If you browse around file sharing sites like Maya Mini Factory, you'll find both individual files and bundles that include prints for whole campaigns. These can get pretty expensive, so my advice is to find a designer you like and see if they have a membership price. You can often get quite a deal. I'd also check out Thangs, where you can find some designers offering freebies or pick and choose membership packages. The best place to find free miniatures is going to be Thingiverse, where the site is supported by a mix of advertising and the generosity of their parent company, Ultimaker. Thingiverse is the biggest and oldest file sharing site, and since everything is free, you're going to find an interesting mix of quality. You'll also find free designs that are teasers to get you to a paid subscription or maybe a Kickstarter project. But I do want to make sure you know about one of the most prolific D&D designers I found on the web. MZ4250. He has over a thousand designs online, all free. Now they're a bit low detail, but hey, free. He covers the gamut from super serious to really freaking goofy. I mean, who else is going to sculpt two halflings in a trench coat or a dire squirrel or my personal favorite, the librarian succubus. If you find this video helpful, do me a favor and tap that like button. It really helps me out with the algorithm and lets me know what I should be making more of. So how does FDM um, 3D printed models compare to resin? Let's take a closer look. Supports can be a real problem with FDM 3D printing, but if you can get those tuned in a little bit, you'll have more success. I like the tree supports for this model because they're easier to remove. That is, they would be easier to remove on a simpler model. This one just has too much going on and it really wasn't a good candidate for FDM printing no matter how hard I tried. If you get a model that's pre-supported, know that they mean supported for resin. These little scaffolding type supports don't really work on FDM. I also gave PETG supports a try. If you're not familiar with that method, PETG is a different type of FDM filament that runs hotter and it has a slightly different property than PLA. Because of this, it won't bond to the PLA. So sometimes you can get really good results using PETG to support PLA or vice versa. Sadly, it didn't work for me this time. You'll want to play around with the angle of the model and the slicer. Tipping the model back so there's nothing on the face can really help. For this one with the sword, I got the best results when I angle it straight up and down. You'll also want to lower your speed, use as fine a layer height as your nozzle can handle, and under extrude a tiny bit. Running these in a Core XY printer would be even better to reduce vibrations, but I wanted to show you what an affordable beginner printer can do for you. I printed these with a standard 0.4 nozzle set with a, a 0.12 layer height and the line width set to under extrude at three millimeters. The smaller plastic model I made with Hero Forge has a lot less detail, especially in the face and this delicate spool. You can tell this design was really made for resin printing. The larger model from Moonlight Minis fared better, but it's still a little rough on the sword and the shield is just destroyed from the supports. Things got a lot more promising when I switched to a 0.2 nozzle. On the Hero Forge models, I have more detail, and they look pretty clean. The supports are still problematic, but if you have a model with a more basic pose, I think you'll do all right. The larger Moonlight Mini looks really good, and with just a tiny bit of sanding, would be fantastic to go ahead and paint. Of course, the resin models are just perfect. These have even smaller layer heights, and the way resin works, there's no vibration to fight, and we can use super delicate supports that don't interfere with too much with the model. So what's the takeaway? 
If you want to print more than just minis and you're worried about the mess, I would go for an FDM printer and pick up a 0.2 nozzle. The Bamboo A1 and the A1 Mini are my favorites for this because they come with a quick swap pot end. When you're looking for models, make sure you use figures that don't have a lot of bits hanging off in space and have nice thick parts. If you're interested, I can show you how to design a better 3D printing model in Hero Forge. They just released kit bashing for pro users, and I think I'd like to try that out. However, for the cleanest, most detailed minis, you really need resin. You don't need to get a printer that's super expensive to get really great results, and you can stick with a smaller print volume to save some money. And of course, you can always just send your custom files to a pro like PCBWay and let them handle the printing for you. If you made it to the end of this video, thanks so much for watching. I'll be back soon with another printer comparison. Right now, I'm digging into multicolor printing and I have a few kit printers that I need to unbox. So what would you like to see next? Leave a comment below and let me know. Thanks for watching.